Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Karen's Kitchen. <laughs> I, sorry I'm a little late, but I was trying to get my prep work done. Um, hi, Simone. Good to see you. I was t trying to melt some things on the stove before I, or microwave. Hi, Arlene, before I came in here. So some of the prep work would be done. I've got uh, melted butter in my bowl, and I wanted to get that done ahead of time. So I did it so I wouldn't spill it. So good to see everybody coming in here, and thank you for coming in. And thank you for inviting your followers. This, um brownie i've never made in the quick cooker before but i get and i should have put birthday on it because today is Erlene's birthday and uh i'm gonna make this brownie for her birthday even though she's not gonna eat it but i'll eat it for her but this is a brownie that we're, i'm gonna fix for Erlene's birthday so this is a birthday this is a birthday uh, scope i just didn't put birthday <laughs> i didn't put birthday on the on the <laughs> yeah i uh, i didn't forgot to put birthday on the on the <laughs> when I did it, but it'll be a good, it'll be a good scope. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think I got it off of Facebook. <laughs> I I took, I was having fun with my avatar and I thought, well, I'm going to try to find my, because I saw my daughter, daughter did it and Arlene did it. And I thought I had an avatar done, but for some reason I hadn't saved it. And my daughter and I, we went to, she helped me one day. She said, well, we got to go in and got to figure out where it's at and save it. So then I, Saved it's in Facebook, and then I went to Facebook and found it for for Periscope, and I cha and I changed uh, I changed my picture for Periscope. Um, so it, I like the avatar. They are uh, so if you're on Facebook, you can have fun doing the avatars. They're they're a lot of fun. Um, you can make them to your likeness or whatever. So it's it's a lot of fun to do that. Um, so I hope everybody is having a good day. Yeah, it is. It is. It is fun. I hope everybody's having a good day, and, and invite your followers if you can, get more people in here. It's kind of disheartening, I'm not getting very many in here, but um, people may show up in a little bit. Um, as far as the weather's concerned, we're, gonna, we're on the cool side, we're not real hot right now. Um, I don't know how hot we're going to, oh, we're going to get 67 today, so that isn't quite so bad. So 67, that's, you know, um, yeah. It's, it's, it's okay. I don't have to use air conditioning. I turn my heat off, so I don't have to do that. Um, oh, yours has been messing up. <laughs> yours probably not the only one. Others are probably have been messing up on them, too. So <laughs> I can just imagine. But you can see, um, oh, it was cool this morning, but not now. As you can see, I've got my, I'm using my spring form pan, and I did put... I put the trivet in there so it's not directly on the bottom. And this is the cradle that you set it into. And I'm setting this in here, and I'll just pour it in here from that. And uh, you just put the handle on because that'll be easier to get it out. I'm using the spring form pan to come with the um, the uh, quick cooker. I better put, keep the handles out so I don't put the stuff in there. But anyway, it'll be a lot easier to get it out. Um, I've already got a cup and a half of water on the bottom of it. Um, <laughs> mute that one. Um, can't can't understand what he's saying, so mute that one. But anyway, um, if you haven't got a quick cooker, uh, get with Alexis and get one. This is one of my favorite my favorite appliances. I've used this an awful lot, not as much lately as I used to, but I am still using it. Uh, uh, um, you know enough. I just I need to use it a little bit more. And I thought, well, today is you know I don't have to do anything on the stove. And I wanted to make a dessert in here because I know you can do cheesecakes in here, which Alexis has done. And I've done it before. But I wanted to make it brownies in here, which I found on Pinterest. Now, that being said, I'm making them vegan because it calls for eggs. So I'm using flax to make my eggs. And that, it calls for two of them. So it's two, two, things of, two tablespoons of flax and six tablespoons of water. Um, you, you just have to do what you... What, what works best for you. So that's why I said vegan. Now, when I put it on my Facebook page, I'll put it on there the way the re recipe's written and people can choose to make it vegan or not vegan or whatever they want. I know Erlene will make it vegan. There's other ones that will probably make it vegan. So I want to get this started in a little bit, not wait for too many people to come in because it's going to take 35 minutes and it's going to take time to come to pressure. And then, and then once it comes to pressure, then it's got to cook for 35 minutes. And then it's got to release naturally. So that's going to take a little bit of time. So I want, I'm going to go ahead and get this started. I put my iPad up here so I can read what I'm doing as I'm doing it. I've already, um, what I have done, I suppose, you really don't really need to grease the uh, the thing too much. I'll put this across here as long as it doesn't fall on my, 
What I did is I have a piece of parchment paper in the bottom of this. If you can see, I've got a piece of parchment paper in the bottom of this. This is so, so I can help get it out a little bit easier. Um, and this pan is just the right size. In fact, this pan, this <laughs> um, spring form pan even fits in my, my air fryer. Um, I haven't used it yet, but it fits in my air fryer. My ceramic pot does too. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get this. So I'm going to, I've melted the butter already. Now I'm going to add the sugar to it, which I just measured out the sugar before I came in here. And I'm going to, and I'm going to um, stir these until smooth. I'll get my, you know, I like these pampered chef spoons. What's a good idea, Erlene? I'm always doing something that's, that's a good idea. Um, so. Okay, now mix in the eggs and the vanilla extract, then add the melted chocolate and mix again. Mix in the eggs, because we know when, here's my flax egg, and I haven't measured out the vanilla yet, but I'll do that. And I'll have more dishes to do again. And then the vanilla. I gotta see how much of that I need. It looks like I need one teaspoon. Okay. I like to look. Okay, let's sit here. One teaspoon of vanilla. I think this is almost gone, but I've got some more in there. So, yep, I'll finish this right out. There we go. It's just nothing like this. I can just throw it away. So, I've got, I've got a new one in there. So, this lasts a long time, but they are expensive. Welcome to everybody coming in. Thank you for coming in and inviting your followers. That's awesome. Let me go throw this away. Excuse me. Hold on. We're outside. Okay. Now. All right. Then add the melted chocolate and mix again. Okay. Now I'm going to add my melted chocolate, which I just put it in here and and uh, it's going to be a little stiff. You know, that's how this is. This is a half a cup of chocolate chips. You know, it likes to sit there and harden up. This is going to be fun to clean. <laughs> really fun. I'm going to try to get it out of here the best I can. I shouldn't have done it so soon, but I wanted to get it. wanted to get these done because I didn't want to sit there and, and put them in the microwave forever and ever in a day. I wanted to get this recipe started. So, I'll try to get this out the best I can. I just have to soak this in water so I can wash it. Let's put it over there. I'll just soak it in water. Okay, now I'm going to mix again. You can see what I'm doing. Now I can put the tripod down. Yes, the chocolate chips have to be melted. Yeah, they have. To, it's only half a cup, Erlene, but yes, they have to be melted. Um, that's what they said. I probably should use my mixer, but I'm just going to go ahead and do this. I could whisk it too, probably, but I'm going to stir this and and uh, it's kind of lumpy. Got to get my whisk out. It doesn't say to use a whisk, but I'm going to do it anyway. Kind of get it kind of mixed, mixed in here a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to put the instructions to the to the recipe on, like I said, on Facebook, and I'll tell you exactly and step by step what you have to do. Yeah, I melted them in the microwave. It didn't take very long. I think I melted them for about oh, melted them for 30 seconds the first time, and then oh, I, and another another 30 seconds. I didn't melt them for a whole minute, but I just 30 second intervals because I didn't want them burning or anything like that. I was afraid the whole minute would would hurt them. But after the after the other 30 seconds, then they were melted. It seems like the whisk seems to get lumps out of stuff and it seems to mix a lot because you don't want it lumpy when you're going to put it in your pan. So I got to melt this. And that's, sometimes the sugar does that. It'll, it'll sit there and, and it'll like to lump up. I'm trying to get all the lumps out of it. Get the lumps. Thank you for everybody coming in. And don't have many in here, but I think more will come in as, as they see what's going on. And, uh, you know, sometimes you can invite followers and they don't really show up, but that's the way it goes. My daughter's not even in here. I think she must be busy with the boys. 
she must have gone to Walmart or something. She picked up my son-in-law and then probably went to Walmart. So that's probably where she's at. By the time she gets gets home, she's going to have to fix supper so she won't be coming in here. Told her she can watch the replay. So she knew I was doing this. I thought she'd be in here, but she's got to... Brand of chocolate? No, I'm using um, Carob. I'm using Carob. Hi, Alexis. Good to see you. Welcome. <laughs> you come in at a good time when I have just just now trying to get my recipe um, mixed up in my bowl. I'm whisking. It's supposed to mix it. I didn't want to get my mixer out, so I thought, well, I'll just take and put it in my put it in my bowl. Because you got your sugar and your butter and my chocolate chips and you know you gotta get the lumps out. So, and I'm gonna use the spring form pan because it'll be easier to get out. Um, be easier than the ceramic pot, even though you still put it on the trivet, but I think I'm, it'd be easier, a lot easier to get out of the spring form pan since the bottom comes out. Everybody knows what a spring form pan is. You have the bottom that you can that you can open up and take it right out. And it does have a, a parchment paper on the bottom of it. So it's actually supposed to be greased, but I figure with parchment paper, I don't have to grease it. So. So I'm trying to get this the lumps out as much as easy as as much as I can, because I don't want lumps in my in the brownies. And I and I should have put I should have put candles or a cake or put birthday in for the for the uh, in the title since this is this is a birthday scope for early and I forgot about that and I didn't realize it until after I I came in that I I should have put birthday on. I didn't know what to put my red. I have to get my cleaning out now. Um, Oh, here it is. Sit there a second. Welcome to everybody coming in. And thank you for inviting your followers. Just thank you for being here. I would have been out a little earlier, a little sooner. But I was trying to get the prep work done on this. And uh, you know how that goes. The prep work takes a little time. I wanted to get all my stuff measured out that I needed to measure anyway. So... It's about the bit. It's getting it's getting better. If I use a mixer on it, I suppose it would mix. I, mean, I just don't feel like getting my mix. Ah, I just don't feel like getting my mixer out. I figure I can do it this way. It says to mix it real good. Well, I'm just using my whisk, and everybody knows this is the Pampered Chef whisk. I love this thing. This is an awesome. This is the Pampered Chef bowl, uh, the large one. One of the. This is the largest of the mixing bowls. They're awesome. I love these mixing bowls. I use these a lot. I use them an awful lot. So they work, work, work real well for stuff like this. So if you haven't got, if you haven't, hi, good to see you, welcome. And if you haven't got anything from Pampered Chef and you want you want to um, buy stuff from Pampered Chef, just get with Alexis and, and go with, you'll find her, pro, her uh, profile, um, in her profile you'll find the, uh, a link to her Facebook page. You'll also find the catalog there. You can look through the catalog and you can buy anything in the catalog that you that you want. Oh, I don't know what to tell you. Because I've been doing this a long time. Um, just find something, probably something simple at first. You don't want to go in, you don't want to go anything that's real hard. Just find something that's easy at first that your seven-year-old will want to do, like making a cake, maybe, or uh whatever. Something that um, is it a boy or a girl? Because I know boys like to bake too. But whatever your, um, whatever he or she wants, just just start something simple like a cake. Oh, girl, okay. Um, maybe she'd want to make a cake, or make a cake and help, let her help you. Um, that would be the other thing I could tell you. Something simple to start with, because you don't want to start with something real complicated. Because if you start with some start, start with something real complicated, she's going to get tired of it real real quick, and she's not going to want to do it. Um, so pie, uh, pies are a little bit more complicated because of the pie crust. So a cake, just get a box cake, cake mix and do that. You know, if you're not vegan and just get a box cake mix and make, make it and make some frosting for it or whatever. That's my advice to you. Um, that's what I would do if I was just starting out. I'm just going to keep this pretty much about the best I can do with it. And I'll just, uh, it'll, it'll probably settle anyway. Uh, fold in the all-purpose flour, cocoa powder, baking powder, and salt. Okay. 
octopus flower. All right. I'm not going to see how much of that I need. Let's see. Oh, half a cup of this. Okay, so this isn't much of this either. so that doesn't fall on the floor. That would be that would be horrible if that thing fell on the floor. But now I break it would, it would I would lose everything. This probably isn't the best way to do this because it can get all over the place, but I'm just doing it for for the sake of time right now and to try to get this in here. But uh, normally I just scoop it in there. But I'm not taking the time to scoop it this time. I'm just pouring it in here. And this is all-purpose flour. I got this at Walmart. Of course, wherever you shop, you have it. So, this over here. All right. Now, fold in the all-purpose flour, cocoa powder. Okay. Everybody knows I use care, so I'll do that. Okay. And then, um, my carob. And that's... Half a cup, half a cup of carob. Okay. All right. I think I will use a spoon for this though, because this does. This likes to blow all over the place, so I'll get a spoon for this. Because this likes to get all over. This is worse than your regular flour. Now this has cocoa powder, but since I'm a vegan and I don't use carob or cocoa powder, I'm using carob, which is actually all natural and it actually tastes better than cocoa powder so um but you feel free to use your cocoa powder whatever you have you feel free to use that Let me go ahead and put this over here set that there for now okay now fold in okay all right and the baking powder and the salt okay and let's see my baking powder half a half a teaspoon okay rinse this off right off and I'll use this to put my baking powder on. But I love these uh, spoons. I just don't have enough of them. Thank you to everybody for coming in and thank you for taking the time to come in here. I know and I hope I'm not boring you to death by doing this but I like to show you what it, you know, what you can make. And I'll go ahead and put this back and then I gotta have, um, oh, half a fourth teaspoon of salt. And a fourth teaspoon of salt. And everybody knows that I use um, my uh, seasons, or season, or not season salt, but sea salt. These jars are good for salt when you run out of, you know, you need something to put your salt in. I just use, I think my turmeric was up in here before. Yeah, turmeric was in here. So I just washed it out and then I just put my salt keep my salt in there. It works. <laughs> you do what you, you you have to. Okay. You want to make sure you get it all in from your bowl. Get it all mixed in here. Now, since this is a seven inch uh, pan, it's probably not gonna fill it up as much, but that's because they, they used a six inch, but you know, it didn't come with a six inch, it came with a seven, which fits just perfect. all mixed in here. I'll just kind of do it this way, kind of get it well, just so it's not so lumpy. Get it all down. Okay. This is gonna be a good a good cake or good brownies. Like I said I should have put I should have put uh, birthday on it. I probably would get more people in here but I forgot I forgot to put brownie on my or birthday as a hashtag since this is Arlene's birthday and uh, 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Earlene. Happy birthday to you and many more. There's your birthday song, Early. <laughs> I knew she was in here, so I wanted to sing her happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, hi, Tony. Yeah, it's Earlene's birthday today. So, and Alexis was singing this morning. Um, I watched her periscope this morning, parts of it anyway. And she was singing happy birthday this morning. She didn't remember that Earlene's birthday was, was today, though. She just said happy birthday to those on June the 8th. And I thought, well, I knew it was her birthday today. I'm pretty good at remembering birthdays. <laughs> yep, so, yep, she's having a real nice birthday today. So, I wanted to think of her because, you know, this is a special day. It is a special day for her, you know. We only have birthdays once a year. And she has hers at a good time of year. She's having hers in the summer. I have mine in the dead of winter. <laughs> That's when I have mine. In her, and I know when Alexis's is. Hers is September 1st. Hers is the same day as my, as my ex-sister-in-law's. Hers is September 1st as well. So, so that's an easy one to remember. So, um, okay. Add one quarter cup of chocolate chips and fold them in the batter. Okay, now I'm going to add a quarter cup of, the, of my chips and, and fold them in the batter. And I don't even know where I'm, Oh, here you are. Okay, and I just ordered some more of these today because I'm running out. This is my last bag, so I ordered some today. Um, yeah, Alexis has mentioned many times that her birthday's um, September 1st, and that's kind of stuck in my mind because, like I said, I have my ex-sister-in-law that was married to my brother who's passed away. She's not. She's still alive, but he's, he's gone now. Her birthday's September 1st. I don't know when her kids' birthdays are, but I know when hers is. So I know when, when their birthdays are when they post on Facebook, and then I wish them happy birthday then. So, um, so I already went in on... Uh, uh, Earlene's pay, uh, page and wished her a happy birthday this morning on Facebook. So that got taken care of. Now, okay. Okay. All right. Now we're going to have some more chocolate chips. They said we can top up with a little bit more. I can just add whatever I want. I'm going to take this out temporarily so I can get this in here. But it's too hard to put it in there with, in, the, in the thing. You know, it's awesome that you can do stuff like this in the quick cooker. Um, this thing is, is very versatile. I mean, Alexis made a cheesecake in here last, last week for her mom for her birthday. And I've made a cheesecake in here as well. It's been a long time ago, but I made it, uh, the, pamper, the cheesecake that's in the uh, book, the pamper chip uh, cookbook. My quick cooker book. Whoa. It's like that. kind of wants the parchment paper wants to move, but I think it'll be okay. I'm just going to try to smooth this down as much as I can. And if the parchment paper moves away, it's all right. It's not going to stick that much anyway. With a spring form pan, it comes out real easy. I'll just spread this around. This is what it looks like. I can always, they say to add a little bit more on top of the, um, and I'll put a little bit of more carob, chip, carob chips on top. And just put some on top. I'm not really going to measure them out. I'm just going to put some on top. There we go. Now, the whole thing of this is, I've got a cup and a half of water in the bottom. You've got this trivet here. You sit this in, in, the, in the pan. You do not want to set your this cradle on the very bottom of your of your um, pot. You have to sit it on your trivet. Then this is the cradle, and the reason I have it this way is because it's got handles on it. Now I'm going to stick this on here, 
it'll be real easy to get in and out of the out of the out of the out of it that way. See, just like that, and then you fold the handles down, and your lid, and then the lid goes right on, so you don't have to worry about it. And I changed, I changed the uh, the the uh, seal. This is my seal for desserts. And let's see. Okay, I cover the cake pan with paper towels and pull. Oh, I forgot that. I, better, I thought I better look. Because you don't want steam getting down in there. So I better cover it with, with uh, paper towels and foil. Let me go Let me go do that right now. And I'll have to cut the foil up. Okay. Because you don't want steam. Let me go get a thing of foil. have to do as long as it's got as it's got the, the got the paper towel and the foil on it it should be okay get down in there just so it doesn't uh it's not the easy thing to do to get that front so it, Let me try something different. It's not staying because I I have there's foil that's specifically made for this and I don't have it. Um, so I'm just gonna have to do this. Just kind of pinch it on the sides here. Pinch it so it stays. Put this down. Pinch it so it stays. And as long as you got pull this over just a little. There. Now it should be okay. This should stay down now. It's hard. I'm doing the best I can, people. So it should work okay. Then I got the handle on this side stuck down in here. You got that's the one thing you gotta make sure your handles are not stuck inside. Oh there it is. Okay. I thought it was inside and it was fell back. Alright. Because your handles have to go over the top of it, just like this. I think that's good enough. It should be okay. Now, I think it's gotta be in there 35 minutes. Um let me go look for sure. I believe it's 35 and then you got to release it naturally. So thank you everybody for coming in and um, being here uh, while I'm making this. Because I haven't done this in a long time. Um, oh. 35 minutes. Okay. And uh, we got, then you got to let the re uh, pressure release naturally. Now I'm going to make sure this time that I've got this thing. See, this thing's all askew. Oh, no foil? It says it says foil. It says foil in the directions though, Erlene. It says foil in the in the instructions. Should I not use foil? Let me know before I start this. Should I not because it said it said foil. It said to use foil because you don't want to get steam into your into your cake. Is it okay to use the foil? Because I, I want to do what the instruction says. So um, or do you mean you don't have any foil? So I've got to make sure this is not all askew. Alexa said no foil. Well, how about the paper towel? Um, the instructions said paper towel and foil. So I shouldn't use anything, Alexis. Should I use anything at all? Just leave it. Just leave it like it is. I just leave it like it is. In fact, I've got Alexis in here. So if if that's going to work, then I'll just leave it. Um, what do you mean no? Oh, <laughs> that's what I thought. How about this? Uh, I'm not, but they said paper towel and foil. Foil, foil. Oh, okay, that's what I said. Paper, paper. I had, I had foil on there. When Erlene said, "You said no," it kind of confused me. What do I do? <laughs> I'll just put this on here. I don't know why you have to have this paper towel. The foil would be okay. Just work with the foil. Yes, it does call for foil. It calls for foil and paper towel, but I don't think you need both. Keep the foil. Yeah, because I've got it on. I've got it on here. I'm just gonna put the towel. I'm just gonna put the paper, the foil on, and not the paper towel. I don't see where the where you need both. Because the cheesecake is the same way. You don't want to get you don't want to get anything down into your. <coughs> yeah, 
towel. Yeah, they said the they said a sky a Scott towel, and they said a Scott towel and foil. But I think the foil should be just fine with without the Scott towel. I would think. Okay, now I've got this all set to go. This gotta be in here for thirty five minutes. Okay, I'm gonna put it on, <coughs> and that and then time, and then I'm gonna just take it up one time one. One minute or five minutes. Because it was set on 30, so I'm just going to put it on 35. And then. <coughs> so, there we go. So I've got the foil. Now, they said Scott towel too, but I took the Scott towel out. I don't see what it needs. No. <laughs> no, it's not soup. It's, 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 a, it's a brownie. It's a brownie, um, Alexis. It's a brownie. So um, I just put the foil on. I don't think where the pot paper towel is going to matter that much. So I just put the foil on. It so it's now this is going to have to come come to pressure and it'll cook for thirty five minutes. So that's basically all there is to it. Um, hopefully this will come out okay. So it's the first one I've ever done in here. So we're going to try. We're going to see how it's going to work because. Um, I've done cheesecake in here, and I kind of made a blunder on that when I did it. But I, because what I did is I added water to the cheesecake and not realizing I wasn't supposed to add water to the cheesecake. I was supposed to put it in the bottom of the pot. Well, that was the first time using it. So I made a blunder on that, and then after I made it, I thought, oh, no, I put the water in the cheesecake because once you put it in, you can't take it out. So it did, still did turn out, but then, but it could have been better if I wouldn't put the water. But, you know, now that I've gotten more experience with using this and I can see... I mean, it would have been sad if I had put that cup and a half of water in here in, into the brownie. Oh, my goodness. That would have been awful. But it's in the bottom of the pot. I didn't forget that. It's already in there. And uh, so it'll be, it'll be, it'll be, should be okay. Um, let's see if I can show you what it looks like. Um, to show it. Well, there's, um, there's what it's supposed to look like. I'm not going to play the video, but that's what it looks like. Um, it's going to look awesome. So I could have used the ceramic pot. But Erlene and I got to talking, and we thought that maybe it would be easier to use the uh, springform pan. It'll be easier to get it out than the ceramic pot. You can't get it out as easily. I, you know, you'd have to use a spatula to get all the way around it. This way, you can just unlatch it and just release the bottom of it, and it'll come right out. So that's why I used the springform pan. Yeah, I know, Erlene. It will be. It will be very interesting. Um, I'm kind of curious too. Um, is yeah I do too. Um, but the beans I got the size of, of air fryer I have. My ceramic pot fits in the air fryer because I used it on that chocolate chip cookie I made. Although I should probably use the springform pan because the, it was hard to get out of the, the ceramic pot, and I sure don't want to drop it like Alex did his. Whoa, that'd have been that'd be sad to drop it. So if I used the springform pan, I wouldn't have to worry about that because you can't break that because uh, that's metal. But I love this quick cooker. Um, if you don't have the quick cooker, I would suggest you talk to Alexis or go into her profile on her Facebook page. Or she's her, her profile's pro, her Facebook page is in her profile. Go in there and check and see in the catalog. See what you want to get. Um, I do think there's a party going on. Did Valerie's party start this week? Because if pa Valerie's party started this week, um, that's let's everybody support Valerie. As I understand it, Erlene had a very good party. She got, I mean, she killed it with the amount of stuff that she's getting from the party. $630, she said, of, of stuff, of product. That is awesome. I think when I did mine, it was $435, which I thought was great. But she killed it. She got a real good party of it. And, and everybody wants to thank you. I thank you, and Erlene thanks you, and Alexis especially. Well, thank you for supporting her during her party. And be aware that you're not going to get it right away. You probably won't get it until next month because there's still back back orders probably early May, I think you said, Alexis. So I knew I wouldn't get mine till, um next month. But at least I, I, I got my order in. Mine was one of the first ones to get or I ordered it before the party even started because I wanted to get it done so I wouldn't forget because it's real easy to forget that, you know. So I got up and got around to getting it done. and, and uh, But anyway... Um, Went higher, 680 and free. She did more than I asked. 
Pro proven results. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. $680. I bet you had fun. She had fun going through that catalog. Oh my goodness, Erlene. You probably had a lot of fun going through that catalog trying to figure out what you wanted. Hi, good to see you. Welcome. You got to go back and watch my replay to see how I made this, but it's in the quick cooker right now. It's not, it's not anywhere near ready to be started, but um, it's so much fun to go through the catalog. But you know, the problem of it is I've got so much stuff now. I wouldn't even, if I had a party, which I, I'm not going to, but if I did, I thought, what the heck would I get? Because I, w I don't use everything. I wouldn't use the rock crock. I wouldn't use some of the stuff that Alexis has. So I'm thinking, well, I'm going to have to, uh, I would have to sit, figure, long, think long and hard what I would what I'd end up getting. But I'll tell you, this one and the blender are two of my favorite products. Um, yeah, you, you, oh, see, it just came to pressure. Um, yeah, you did, Erlina. She said she also, she also had people from Fab with Babs that ordered from her um, because they knew her from Fab with Babs. So that helped too, you know word of mouth or, or um, you know, sending out messages and stuff like that really helps get the word out. And so she got a lot of orders and it absolutely panned out. It, she's, she had a real good party of it. Now this is going to start cooking. This is going to start, start cutting the time down pretty quick. It's already, it's just sealed just, just right now. So I'm so glad that she had a good party because most of the time she has a party, she doesn't have a very good one. It doesn't work for her. Yeah, your friend, you know, having a lots of friends. She was messaging at one after another after another. I got messages, and 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 she messaged so many people. She said she she thought if she messaged them enough, they'd probably get tired of hearing her, seeing her message them that they would finally decide to buy from her. I don't know if they did or not, but uh, that's just the idea of, of of you know. And the games were a lot of fun. Of course, when we got. The games got done. Arlene messaged me. She says, "Ah, oh, shoot! I wanted you to win." I says, "Well, that's okay. I had a lot of fun playing. I know it was Mary, Mary that won, and and the Cheryl. That's okay. I had fun playing anyway. I don't expect to win when I play that stuff. I I just I just had fun trying to guess. I didn't guess it right on on every anything at all. I was like a rock in their shoes. Yeah, I would say so, Arlene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like they wanted to take that rock out of your shoes and throw it at, throw it at you. But it paid off because you got the people to buy, and that's awesome. So now that your party is closed, now you can relax, and now other ones can take take the advantage of having things posted in Facebook and and uh, trying to get people into their party. A lot of people don't, don't know Valerie. She's not in here right now. Um, she's a good friend of mine. Um, so if you know Valerie... Steel, please buy from her. Her, pa her party is starting today, I believe. Um, go into Alexis's profile and click on on her 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 name, and you can and she'll get a credit for anything that you buy. I won't be able to because I bought enough from Merlin's, and I think I've got enough right now anyway. So if you if you haven't got everything that you want, like the quick cooker, you got the deluxe blender, you got this whisk or the um, even small stuff, your measuring, your adjustable spoons or your measure alls, anything. It doesn't have to be anything real big. Just get with Alexis and say, this is what I'd like to order. You can always add on to your order too later on. Um, whatever you choose to do because it helps, it helps Alexis because that is her business and it helps the one that, that is having the party because she can get a lot of free stuff. And you know, that's the most important thing is getting the free stuff. I enjoyed it when I did it because I got a lot of lot more free stuff than I thought I was ever going to get. Didn't turn out, it wasn't as big a party as Erlene's was, but I was happy with it nonetheless. So hers hers turned out fantastic and, and everybody did a good job ordering. You know, they, they decided to order anyway. So everybody that's ordered from her is a great big thank you. And I know that you guys are going to really be happy with what you get. Because Pampered Chef is a great product. They've been around 39 years, I believe, Alexa said. And their stuff, they got, they got um, guaranteed for life. And you, you get a money back. If You get a money back from them, though, if something breaks uh, by accident. But it, uh, by accident, if it's, if it's cooking or something, it breaks, that's fine. But if you drop it, huh, you're, you're, it's your baby. You got to replace it. So I don't know if Alex knows he's going to have to replace his uh, <laughs> ceramic pot. I don't want mine falling on the floor like his did. You know, I was so afraid that day. I used it in my, in my air fryer. Was I going to drop it? But I didn't. I was real careful with it. Um, but it's, it's, 
off their awesome, awesome products. I can't stress that enough. If you can afford Pampered Chef, get it. But you have to start out slow. You can't buy a lot at once because it is expensive. Um, buy just a little here and a little there. Now, there are some things that Alexis has that I don't. And there are some things that I have that she doesn't. Um, the things that she has, like the rock crock and stuff, I would never use that. So what I have, I use. I, I make macaroni and cheese in here. I put, um, I do make soups in here. I do uh, sweet corn in here. You can also do baked potato in here, and I haven't done that yet. And the blender, oh my goodness, you can do so much with that blender. Um, so if you can find your way to buying things from, from Alexis, please do. Oh, now I saw it's, it's going down already. It's 31 minutes. So if you can find a way to buy anything, I would do that because... You'll never know until you've had the Pampered Chef products in your hands how much good they're going to do. And then you're going to wonder, why didn't I buy stuff like that a long time ago? That's what I thought. When I started buying the Pampered Chef, I thought, my goodness, why didn't I get this stuff a long time ago? But, you know, coming on Periscope and getting acquainted with Alexis is how I, how I learned to start buying Pampered Chef again. Because, you know, you didn't, I didn't hear too much about it before that. And watch, starting to watch, and I don't even remember how I started following her anymore. But I started following her, and she was doing scopes, and then she was talking about Pampered Chef. So then I thought, well, this is awesome. So that, that's how I started started buying. And then, of course, Lorene started following me on YouTube. And then when she followed me on YouTube, she started coming on Periscope when she realized I was on here. So um, that's basically how it goes. And it just keeps on going. It'll just keep on snowballing that way, which is a good thing because you want to be able to get the message out somehow to people that Pampered Chef is a good product. They really are. Um, oh, that, yeah, I suppose you probably did, because, yeah, because I found her first, and then you thought, yeah, I, I believe you're right. Uh, now, I have not been on here as long as Alexis had. I believe I came on, I think I started Periscoping about a year after they started, maybe. But then when I first started coming on Periscope, I only did just a few minutes at a time, because I was so shy, I didn't want to be on camera. So I do four or five minutes at a time. <laughs> Oh, people are watching John Cooks. That's probably why they're not coming in here. I didn't even know he was on. So, yeah, they're, they're probably in his scope. That's okay. John hasn't come on very much. So, if they want to go into John's, that's, that's okay. You know, because I'll get replays on this. So, there's no problem with that. So, anyway, uh, watching her and getting some ideas from her. You know, and I've learned a lot from Alexis. Oh, he's... Oh, wow. Um... Uh, you know, I've got, I've learned a lot from Alexis, uh, doing things that, you know, learning how to slice my bananas up uh, for for um, your ice cream, you know. And just watching her, I've learned a lot of how to do things. And I really appreciate the, the value that she's given me and, and learning because I wouldn't know some of the stuff I know without her. And she started using the, the quick cooker long before I got mine. And when she started using it, I thought, this thing is awesome. In case you don't know, this is the similar to an Instapot. When any Instapot recipe will come in here. In fact, the, the brownies that I'm doing is an Instapot recipe. But it goes in the quick cooker. You just have to adjust your time because this is a different uh, uh, piece of appliance than your Instapot. But it's on the same concept, but your wording is a little bit different. That's got 29 minutes to go. Um, well, thank you. That's, you know, if we can help somebody along the way, that's what we're here for. Um, th that that really makes me feel good to know that you are learning from me. And it, it makes Alexis probably feel good to know that you're learning from her too. That's what we're here for. To help you to learn. To cook in your own home. and Because if we can do it, you can do it. Um, yes. I, yeah, me too, Erlene. Yes, she does. She shows how to take care of the PC tools. And I've learned, I've learned a lot from her on that too. How to take care of the PC tools. Because I wouldn't know how to take care of them if it weren't for her. She's really showed us how to how to take care of stuff, you know. Um, you just watch Alexis if you're not if you're not following her and go in there and, and you can learn from her every morning. She uses Pampered Chef tools every morning, whether it be the quick cooker, the blender, or the air her air fryer died on her, so I have to get a different one of those. But no matter what it might be, she's always using her her um, you know her measure all and her adjustable spoons and. She's using a lot of the tools that I have and Arlene has. She uses the garlic press, which is one of my favorite tools. 
I use that thing a lot. So, and it's really come in handy. Hi, Crystal. Good to see you. Welcome. Um, I know everybody's in John Cook's scope, but that's fine. Um, they'll come, they'll come into mine eventually. But anyway, I appreciate those that are here because I'm here to help you to learn too. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Um, I, I appreciate that. Um, it's really, really hard sometimes to get non-vegans into a vegan scope. And I understand that because I am, I cook differently than the non-vegans do. But I appreciate the fact that Alexa still takes the time to come in my scopes anyway because she knows that when I post something, I'm going to post it on my page just the way the recipe's written and I tell you what I substituted it for. So you can make it just the way it's written. Now I did take that, that, uh, sweet, sweet potato, um, soup that I made and I, I was going to post it up in your and you have to approve it Alexis I was posting up in your page because that sweet potato soup was awesome the only thing I think that I could have used a little bit more vegetable broth it called for two and a half cups to four cups of sweet potatoes it should have probably put another half a cup in there because it kind of stuck up into the lid but it still came out good I got it nice and clean and everything it, it was really really good Actually, that sweet potato is a lot better than I thought. You know, and I've always complained about sweet potatoes. I don't care for sweet potatoes. Well, it's the yams I don't really like. The ones different, they have a different flavor too. Because I know on Thanksgiving, I'd always pass the yams down the table because I didn't like them. I ne I've tried those and I cannot stomach the taste of those. Sweet potatoes, much better. Um, the next time though, I think when I make that, like Erlene said, you can use frozen sweet potatoes. Um already cut up because that was a bear to cut up it was so big and even though i used this it took time to cut it up i did the best i could getting it cut up and don't ever use this the wrong way and keep your sheath on this at all times when you're not using it because this is a sharp sucker and you will lose a hand you'll lose a finger or whatever so keep this on here at all times and this came with the um the salad bowl that Alex had got me one one year for my birthday, last year for my birthday. This come with that salad bowl. So this is an awesome. I love this knife. So um, just be you got to be real careful with your with those knives because they are sharp. The utility knife. This is another one. I don't. Yeah, this is another one. It's got the sheath. I've gotten cut on this one already. This is a sharp knife. This is a very good knife. I love it. But you got to be careful with it. And there's also this um, tomato knife. Now I haven't used that yet. But this is, oh, yes, I have. Yes, I have. And this is a sharp one, too. It's serrated. So you keep your sheaths on there, and you won't get hurt. Um, you just got to be careful with all your tools. Uh, but once you have them in your kitchen, you wonder <clears throat> how you did without them for so long. Because they are, quali they are good quality products. I've never had anything break on me at all. Never had anything break. So I'm kind of glad of that. Nothing broke. Everything's held together. And I'm I'm glad. I'm really, really, boy, I'm, they're dropping off like flies now. They must be going to John's scope. I see you gave me, um, you gave me super hearts, Erlene. Thank you very much for that. I do appreciate that. Um, I'm not going to get as many in here today. But, you know, people can watch my replay and see what I made. Because I know John, they like John's cooking. So they'll go in and watch him a lot, a lot better than they will me. But that's okay. Um, I do appreciate the ones that are in here. Um, you are taking the time to watch me. Uh, like I said, Alexis isn't vegan, but she will come into my periscopes whenever she possibly can and watch them uh, because uh, she can learn from me just like I learn from her. We learn from each other, and that's the whole idea. We learn from each other. Welcome to those coming in, and thank you for coming in. I've got this in my, and it's got 23 minutes to go. Um, it's got to also, it's got to um, cool down naturally. Um, oh, you want to see how the brownies turn out? I do too, Erlene, so you can stick in here. It's going to take a little time. I know if you have to go out with Brandon, I, I can understand. But I want to see how they turn out too. Now, I did say to put paper towel and foil on it. But I took the paper towel off and I wanted to just leave the foil on. You know, she said no foil, but I thought, yeah, i got to have foil. That's what it said. So I took the paper towel off. But I think the foil will be okay without the paper towel. You don't really need that. So anyway, because it's just for me. But I didn't put... <laughs> I didn't put the candles or, or a cake or, or birthday on my on my uh, thing, and I should have because this is actually for for Erlene's birthday. You know, it's her birthday today, and I wanted I wanted to make something for her birthday. 
to commemorate her birthday. We only have birthdays once a year. So that's why I did that. Um, 22 minutes now. You're eating your cake now. Yeah, I'm sure you're probably going to eat it up. I suppose Brandon and Bruce will probably help you, huh? <laughs> yep, this is so... Um, she's Her birthday's today. Um, and that's why I'm doing this scope, to commemorate her birthday. Um, she's 62 today. I don't think she minds you telling me her age, because she's 10 years younger than I am. So, and uh, we've been real good friends. Her and I text about it every day. Um, she texts me real early. Sometimes a little earlier... Then I'm, when I'm still asleep, and I'll just I'll just look at it, and I'll just roll back over and go back to sleep because I'm not usually awake until four thirty five o'clock my time because I my dogs have to go out and go to the bathroom. So so um, I try to I try to uh, when she um, um, messaged me this morning, I was already awake because I had to let my dog out, my my Pomeranian out, and I was awake and I was just laying in bed doing things on my phone, and I and I then I. Uh, with going on Facebook and, and wishing her a happy birthday, you know. Um, it's off. It's awesome. Also nice. Yes, it is very, very nice having friends. She's one of my best friends um, because she has always stuck by me. She has come to, she comes to every one of my scopes if she can. And now if she doesn't get the notification, which sometimes that happens. Periscope will not always give me out the notifications. I don't know why, but... As long as she gets my notification, she'll come in. So she's always here to support me, and I appreciate that. Um, and Alexis tries to be here as much as she can. Um, Sharon usually is here, and Cheryl's usually here. They're probably in John's right now, though. But I've got a lot of friends on here that support me. I've got some some vegan ones that come in here. Like I said, a lot of non-vegan ones that come in here, too. So I appreciate everybody that comes in here, because without you people, I wouldn't be doing this. I, I do it because... I do have people that are following me and do want to see me do vegan scopes. Um, and, and I do appreciate that because those that come in here that are not vegan, like maybe Cheryl and Sharon and some of those that are not vegan, they'll come in here anyway. Um, oh, wonderful. Well, yeah, I know you do early and I, and I appreciate that. Um, I know that you... Um, oh, well, thank you, Amber. That's wonderful. For you to say that that's awesome and you don't have to be vegan you don't have to be vegan and come in here i appreciate the fact i have non-vegan people in here because like i said i take the scopes or i take these recipes and i'll make them vegan but then when i post them on my facebook page my karen's vegan heaven i'll go in there and i'll post it just the way it's written and then i'll put in parentheses what i substitute it for um so i really do appreciate those that come in here and and support me because it real it makes me realize that you do care enough that you want to be here. You want to see how I make things. Uh, oh, thank you. You know something? I get a little upset sometimes. The numbers are down, you know. But it is what it is. Um, I'm happy that I do get people in here. The numbers are going up a little by little now. But it's 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 the um, people do come in here and they do watch me and I do appreciate it. And it seems like there's more vegans out there that are, that are starting to come into my scopes. They realize I'm vegan. So now vegan Dave hasn't been in here a while, but he's vegan, you know? Um, yeah, you're right. They are hit or miss. Absolutely. Now yesterday my scope only had 98 in it. I thought sure I had more than that. 98. And now I don't know how many replays I've received, but uh, you know, I have to take it. But what, what, it was a little disheartening after I saw that. Because I thought, well, everybody wants to see sweet potato soup in a blender, but I guess not. You know, so I thought, well, I'll take it for what it is. I was thankful I had what I had. So, and I'm thankful for today what I have. I don't know how many I'm going to have. I'll just not worry about it. You know, the Lord will bless anyway, you know, because I'm here to show you that you can make things. There's Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Good to see you. I've got everything in my, in my quick cooker. You'll have to go back and watch the replay. I figured you probably were in John's scope. And uh, so that's what does uh, Amber or somebody said that did, everybody's in John's scope. So I figured that's where you were at. So you'll have to watch the replays how to make this. It's got uh, 18 minutes to go yet because I started at 35 minutes. Then I have to let it re release naturally. But it shouldn't take that long because there's only a cup and a half of water in here. But anyway. Oh, yeah, I've noticed that. They're very down. They're down. As they're not. Um, oh, you're getting ready for work. Yeah. They are down a lot more than they used to be. It's, it was, it's not like her to get seven, eight hundred, and she's even getting three, four hundred in her periscopes anymore. They're, they're down. 
people just aren't coming into these scopes anymore. I think a lot of people are quitting Periscope, you know, or they've got, or they've disillusioned or something of that nature that they just don't want to watch the scopes anymore. But I know her numbers are down too. Um, you know, it is what it is. We can't help it sometimes. You know, I don't force people to come in here. If they want to come in here and they want to watch my periscopes and they find it good content, they'll stay to the end. If they don't, they won't. That's the way I look at it. You know, and I don't force people or shake my fist at them and says, get your butt in here and stay in here. And I don't do that because I'm not that type of person. I feel if you want to watch me, you will. You'll come in here. If you don't, you won't. You know, my daughter, she's she's gone. I knew she'd be gone, so she isn't in here. Maybe I'll get convinced her to watch the replay, but... I do this because I know you like to watch me make make vegan stuff. Not everybody does, but the ones that do enjoy it. And you learn how to how to cook differently. Um, I like a lot watch, watching Alexis, even though she's not a vegan. I like watching her um, most of most of the time. Most of the time, I, I, I now this morning I when she did the bourbon part, I, I I got out of there for that. But the bread pudding was awesome. I like that part. I'm watching that. But I didn't care for the bourbon stuff, so I didn't watch that part of it. But anyway, I want, what I want to watch, I'll watch. And what I don't, I just leave. But I don't complain to them about it. It's, you know, it's their scope. They can make what they want. You know, if I don't want to see it, I just leave. And that's what I feel about mine. If I'm making something that, you don't, that you're not interested in watching, you won't be here. Um, that could very well be. That could very well be. But she is a Pampered Chef consultant, and she's going to be pushy. She is going to try to get people to buy. I'm never that way. I don't. I don't sell it. And uh, she wants me. I know she wants me to do another show, but I am or a party. But I'm not going to do it because I've done enough parties now. I've got enough pampered chef. I've ordered for Merlin's party, and uh, or 170 dollars worth. And I can't keep buying like that. It, I go broke. So I'm just going to leave it go. You know. I'll buy when I buy. I'll buy when I want, and I won't. And I <laughs> when I don't, I won't. Let me go get some water real quick. So that's the way I feel. You know, if people want to want to come in here and watch me, they will. If they don't, they're not going to. Oh, thank you, Erlene. Thank you. I, I'm glad you do because I knew that you would. And I bought before your party even started, as you, as you know. Because <laughs> Erlene's party came out really good. And if you don't know it, and... And she appreciates you too. You buying too, Cheryl? I mean, she she ended up. She told me, uh, and I saw your text, Erlene, that you only had to pay a dollar eighty one. That's awesome, man! If you can buy out and get everything like that and get some free stuff, and only end up paying a dollar eighty one, boy, you killed it, girl! You really did. That's really awesome. Um, I was an early bird. I wanted to get my order in before the party started so I wouldn't forget, because it's real easy to forget something like that. But I already had in mind what I wanted to buy. So I thought I'm going to go right in the catalog and I'm going to order it. But I got the, I bought the, the two five and a half inch uh, cast iron skillets, the uh, simple slicer, and the uh, smoothie attachment for the blender. Um, because the smoothie attachment, Erlene told me that smoothie attachment is awesome and it makes real good smoothies. Now I haven't tried any smoothies in here without it yet. I suppose I'm going to have to try but she said the smoothie attachment is real good, and um, it works great. Oh yeah, I know you. Ha and you know that when you're wearing an HOTM like that, you've got to try to figure out what do I need for forty bucks. I mean, it's not much to spend, but still, you know, if you've got everything you need, what are you going to spend it on? You know, huh? You might buy a lot of items and end up with smaller items for forty. But you know, what can you do? But. Uh, Hi, Damon. Good to see you. Welcome. I got It's in my quick cooker. I'm going to see how the brownies came, the brownie came out. But, you know, it, it is what it is. I appreciate everybody being in here and supporting me because I know um, when I come on, you will you will be here. Um, my walking scopes, you, love, you appreciate those. You go in there. And it's ironic. Get this now. I'll get more in my walking scopes than I get in here. I don't know why that is. But, uh, but my walking scopes end up being more than here, or my Bible scopes end up being more than I get on my cooking scopes. It doesn't make any sense, 
But, you know, it is what it is. At least I get people in here. It's not that I'm sitting here talking and nobody's in the bottom listening to me. I see there's 12 people, so that's better than nothing. And I'll take it. I'll take it any day. Because you can end up with two or three people, and that's all you have, the whole scope. Um, no, ours isn't yet. Um, we're only in phase two. We're having outdoor church next weekend. Next Saturday, we're having outdoor church at the... At the uh, academy but then the following week we're back online again so we're but they said that when we do open our churches and this is what i'm not liking now our conference said that once the church does open up we are we're limited as to how many people can come in the church and those 60 years of age those 60 years of age and older cannot come into worship until there could be until we can until we get to another phase we can have more people in their church and most of our church there is made up of elderly. So that's not going to be able to leave a lot of people left. So it's, you know, my son says, well, Mom, you've got to, you've got to do what the conference wants. So I won't be able to go to church until until we get to that point where I can be, you know, now outdoor church. And, you know, there's not so much of a limit on it. But the indoor, yeah, there's a limit. And I don't know what the limit is right now because we're in phase two. But uh, I just have to accept it. And I don't like it, but there's nothing I can do about it. Not a darn thing. Because that's that's what they mandated, you know. I don't think it's fair. Somebody said they thought it was elderly abuse. It could can could it can be construed as elderly abuse, because people are, are 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 not letting us go into church, and I don't like that. I want to be able to go into church and worship. I miss it. But they said even when we do start in the building, now at, at the outdoor church, they'll be able to sing. We still have to keep our distance, the six six feet. Um, and you can wear a mask if you want to. But in the church building, we're not going to be able to sing. We're not going to have any Sabbath school classes and no potlucks, which the outdoor church are not in the potluck anyway. Everybody has to bring their own lunch. I understand the potlucks, but no singing and no Sabbath school classes. Then what's the point of even going to church? You know, this whole thing is a big mess. It really is. I think it's it's gotten out of hand. It's gotten out of control. And... They're making it seem a lot worse than it really is. You know, it's it's sad, but that's what they're doing. They're making it seem a lot worse than what it really, really is. Uh, you know, I have to deal with it. I go into Walmart and I'll wear a mask, but there's still a lot of people that won't. They refuse to wear masks. What can you do when they don't wear masks? And then they go down the same aisle as you, going across from you, and they're, and they're going the opposite direction. And you have a mask on and they don't. That really bothers me when they do. Um... Uh, I know. That's true. That is true. And I think that's probably one reason why they're very cautious and they don't want they don't want to open up the churches too soon and they don't want to have too many people come in. I think it, it's it's like my daughter said, well they're trying to protect the elderly because a lot of the elderly have immune co uh uh or compromised immune systems. And a compromised immune system, if it's compromised and you get you get around somebody that may be sick, you're going to get sick too. So it's best that we do stay home. I mean, I, I don't like staying home, but I, I, I deal with it. Um, no, they don't. They don't follow the rules. When you walk into Walmart, there are signs posted saying, follow these um, gui the guidelines, more or less, and they, they show you exactly the signs that are on the floor. You know, shop this way and do not enter. Invariably, they'll come on the side that says, do not enter. And when you tell them they're going the wrong way, some of them shrug their shoulders. Now, yesterday, I didn't say anything to anybody. There were some that went the wrong way, and I just thought, let it go. Because one guy at, at Walmart told me, he says, it's not worth getting into an argument over. He says, just don't say anything. So I try not to, but yet some of the employees are happy when people do say something because they want everybody to follow the rules. I mean, the rules are there for everyone, not just for some. Like that one that one day that, that got mad at me because I told her she's going the wrong way, her and her daughter. She said it didn't matter. And then asked me if it bothered me. Yes, it does bother me. I should have told her what bothers me is you're here, here shopping, going down the opposite way on the aisle and not have a mask on. That's what really bothers me the worst, the most, you know. Now she politely told me, she said, she told me to stay home. She says, well, if you don't like it, she says, you just stay home. And I really should have said, I should have said, well, you're the one that should stay home. You're the one that's not following the rules. You're not looking at the signs on the floor. And you're not wearing masks. I mean, the daughter, she must have been, a, she was a teenager. And she said, well, it really doesn't matter. I said, so what are the signs on the floor for? They're not just for some people, they're for everybody. 
I mean, you don't have to abide by them as much as I do. But, you know, she got real smart with me, you know, and the lady says, well, why don't you mind your own business? I said, you, I told her, I said, you're not going in the right, going, coming down the, the wrong way. This is my business. You know, it was because she was going the wrong way and I have, didn't have a mask on. You know, I, sh I could have told her that too. I says, well, you, you didn't have a mask on, so you're the one that should stay home, but people don't care. Because they, when you write, when you come into Walmart, it says, um, masks recommended. Now, if they say masks, masks are required, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to balk at that one. Because they don't want to be told they have to wear masks. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Earlene. But I, I, you know, I don't want to get anybody in trouble. And I don't want to get mad at people for not doing the right thing. But I have to obey the rules. Was it any different for them? They should have to obey the rules, too. I mean, the rules, they always say, well, rules are meant to be broken. But rules are there for everyone. If we can't follow the rules, then we might as well not even go out. You know, if they're not going to follow the rules and follow the signs, then they should stay home. Oh, you're probably right. You're probably right they, that uh, we need uh, stuff with masks. You're right. Um, I agree. But, you know, it's only going to get worse. I don't think it's going to get any better. You know why I say that? With all the rioting and the looting going on in different cities. It's even come here into my city and they burn buildings down and everything. People are not staying six feet apart. They're not wearing masks, most of them. And they're going to, and you know, they're burning and looting places. And they're, they're going to cause more. Now, I've, I checked our st statistics this morning. And we, what, one time we were at 62 or 67 confirmed cases. Now we're up to 80. So it has jumped up. We've only got three deaths, however, here in my county, which is pretty good. But the, all in all, the whole state of Oregon, there's over 4,000, 4,600 and some odd um, confirmed cases and 161 deaths. So it isn't a lot, but that's enough. That is enough. Oh, yeah. Seattle, Portland. My ex-husband said Portland's really bad. I mean, they literally tear Portland up. And it's like my daughter said, she says, why in the world? This was in, they, you know, they were in Minnesota. Why in the heck there didn't they didn't they do that in Minnesota? Just stay in Minnesota and not not come here, not come everywhere else. I'm trying to get this. Somebody tried to call me, and I'm going to try to see if I can get it up without losing you guys. So hold on. If I lose you, I'll come right back. There, I got it off. Um, I don't understand it. The guy, I guess he wasn't from Minnesota anyway. He was from Texas, I guess. But the thing, of it, and this is what gets me. I understand. He shouldn't have died. That is, that, is, that is a given right there. I feel sad he died. But you know the sad thing of it is? They are memorializing that guy, and he was a criminal. He was a criminal. And if the cops hadn't have caught him, he probably would have stolen a car, probably would have done some other kind of something that would have let, eventually landed him in prison. I don't agree that what the cops did was right. It wasn't. They should have stopped him, yes, Put cuffs on him and put him in the police car. That should have been the end of it. They should not have put their knee or their head into his neck and, and, and when he said he couldn't breathe, not let him up. That was wrong. They took their authority and they misused it. I don't agree with that at all. Um, but to memorialize the man, have the funeral, and broadcast it on news channels and stuff, that's crazy. Like my daughter said, there was a, there was a black police officer that was killed during all the rioting. He got killed by some looters and rioters, I guess. Where is his notoriety? Where's his memorial, more, memorial at? Nobody's even thinking of him. You know why? Because he's a cop. People don't care for cops. Um, and it's, it's terrible. Yeah, I know. And he had a rap sheet, as I understand. He had a rap sheet. And he shouldn't have even been a police officer. But, you know, they say black lives matter. All lives matter. But if you're going to say black lives matter, then a black police officer, a retired black police officer that's been killed, why doesn't his life matter? Because he's a cop and people don't like cops. So they're probably happy he's dead. You know, and it's sad. It is so sad because his life means as much as anybody else's does. Why they feel like this um, George Floyd has to be memorialized like he is and he was a total criminal. He was a criminal from the word go, the things that he had done. And he wasn't, he wasn't a good guy at all. He was a t bad guy. So what is, what's their problem? I don't understand it. I really don't understand it. Not in the least. I don't understand it. You know, you memorialize a criminal, that makes no sense. 
Now this is only got three minutes to go, but I have to let it naturally release. So it's, it's almost done cooking. But why memorialize a criminal? That makes no sense to me. I don't know where people's thinking are, you know. And I, and I, I like I said um, on my Sokopa on Sunday, all lives matter. Oh, is it really? I didn't hear about that, Damon. Well, you know, I can't say it's not going to, Damon. The problem of it is you get rioters and looters here in the United States. And and what I and this is what I don't understand. Okay. A man is killed by the police, which has been happening a lot lately. Okay. Some, some by accident, some maybe, maybe on purpose. I don't know. But anyway, why are they rioting and looting just because a cop killed a, a white cop killed a black man? That makes no sense. You can't, you can't correlate the two. I, at least I can't. I can't correlate the two. What does one have to do with another? Nothing. But, it's, you know, this is even worse than the Rodney King situation. There was a lot, lot of rioting and looting at the time of Rodney King. And that was in L.A. And you know how bad L.A. is. But it doesn't seem like everything now is a lot worse than it was then. There was a lot of rioting and looting then. They, you know, tore a lot of places up, set them on fire, break windows, cop cars, you know, bust out windows and cop cars and everything. It makes no sense. Yeah, I know, going around stealing free stuff. You're right, they were stealing free stuff. I know that, oh, that's, you know, hi, Keen, good to see you, welcome. I know, and people are sad that, that they're only doing this, breaking the windows so they can go into them, um, people's businesses and, 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 you know, take the stuff that they want. Oh, I'm great, thank you for asking. And I, I saw this one video of this black man on um, Facebook that he actually got his business burned down and he could not figure out why they burned his business down he said i'm one of you and you burn my business down and i'm going to put this on on a uh, cancel and just let it naturally release um and you burned his business down that makes no sense at all i know he he didn't understand it uh, a black man that had his they actually burned his place down broke his windows and everything they work hard. I don't care if it's white, black, or what color it is. They work hard to establish their business and to make a go of it. And for people to actually come in there and destroy it, vandalism, that is really so sad. Uh, I can just imagine. That is horrible. It's just, uh, you know, this this whole thing is just, it's, it's, really, it's really bothering me bad. It's really, it's really a shame that this has come, it's come down to this. It really is. It's a shame that it's come that that it's gone this far. It really is. I don't understand it, but it, it's 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 horrible. Let me see. Dogs need a little bit of dog food. I'm gonna put a little bit of dog food in the dish. Hold on. Let's see if I get a little dog food. But um, you got dog food. Okay, wait. You got dog food. Hold on. I'm just giving them a little bit of dog food. They're hungry, and I'll give them some more later. Um, there you go. Okay. Yes, I. Oh, you saw a video of it on Facebook. Yes, my my daughter said she finally saw the whole video of this George Floyd, and she said the thing of that was the media was not telling all the the whole situation. They were making believe that it was all the cops' fault. Um, I I know it's wrong either way. Like I'm saying, it was wrong for the cops to do what they did. But if he wasn't a criminal and hadn't been a, or hadn't or assisted resisted arrest and done what he did, they wouldn't have had to do what they did. They wouldn't have had to take the measures they did. That does I mean it doesn't justify them killing him, no. But it's like my daughter said, he almost asked for it because he, he, he you know he was in trouble and he was a criminal and he was resisting arrest. Well, when you resist arrest they're going to use force, but they use too much force. That's the problem. Um, yeah, I fed them. They had all their, they ate food. They ate it up, but they're still hungry. Buttercup, you got a dish full over there. Go get yours. So I had to give them a little extra food. So they ate it up. They're really hungry today. So I, I put them in two dishes. So I think they'll be good, good to go after this anyway. But it's really sad how people have to go to the, to the, the way they've gone, destroying other people's property. That must make them feel good to destroy other people's property. It really must. Holy cow, I can't believe that, that people would... And, and 
would they want that to happen to them if they were if they had a business they wouldn't want their businesses destroyed uh, oh I, yeah I can imagine well I'm kind of glad that they all got fired as I understand it my daughter was telling me two of them two of them were trainers that they were training these police officers and one they'd only been on the job four days and they asked him if they should if, if they asked the trainers if they should let him up because they were in training and they says no. Well, that was wrong out of them, so they got fired, too. Uh, I know. They don't, yeah, right. They don't care because it's not theirs. It's absolutely terrible. You know, you. that's what this world is made up of, is people taking from other people. Uh, oh, yeah. But you know something? They, wanna, they want to, um, I don't know the word that my daughter used, but they want to get rid of all cops. So whenever there's any cops around, they're not. They want to destroy them. They want to shoot them down. They want to get rid of their cop cars and everything. They want to burn the police stations down. Yes, he was. He was. He had a rap sheet. He was. Yes, he was a criminal. He was very much so, and he was resisting arrest. I don't know. They caught him for doing something. He had done something before he got arrested. And he was trying to resist arrest, and, and I can understand why they used force. But they did have him down on the sidewalk. I saw that. He was down on the sidewalk with handcuffs on. They could have left it go with that. Picked him up, put him in the police car, instead of taking him across the street, and then almost sitting on him like they did. The, and then not letting him up. When I saw that, I was sitting I was sitting there almost bawling. I said, this is crazy. I felt sorry for the guy, you know, uh, because they wouldn't let him up. He kept saying he couldn't breathe, and they didn't care that he couldn't breathe. They just, they just kept their foot in his face. You know, and pushed him down further into the concrete. Well, it's no wonder the guy died. You know, they lost their jobs, but the the, the one that actually did it, he's all he's got a murder charge against him too. So what good did it do? He's now he's now without a job and, and got a murder charge. It was it, it was terrible. Like I said, I abhor violence, and I don't think that what the cops did was right. They're not taught that way in in the police academy to be that forceful with people. You, you're, you're supposed to serve, protect and serve. Did they protect and serve? No, they didn't. They didn't protect and serve either. Um, that's what I'm saying too. Why didn't they do something instead of standing around and just letting him, letting him do what he did? They didn't stop him. They did not stop him at all. Hi, good to see you. Welcome. They didn't stop him at all. They just they just let him continue to do what he was doing. And that's terrible. You don't let somebody continue on. Uh, you know, there's, I really don't know. I really did not know the name until, it, until I heard about it. And then I kind of wondered what was going on. And my daughter's the one that told me about it. Because I hadn't heard about him getting killed at all. And she told me about it. And she said, Bobby, I haven't heard about jo this guy named George Floyd getting killed by the cops I says no what happened then she told me and and I says well it's sad it's sad he died and I'll always say that to this day um I imagine that yeah the cops did have complaints on them but I don't understand if that's the case why were they still police officers why didn't they suspend them without pay at least for a while don't uh, don't let them be a police officer and do what they did it wasn't until they took this man's life that they finally got their, they, they lost their jobs. Um, I know. They think they're above the law. They are the law, so they think they're above the law. Yeah, they do. <sighs> what a dumb question to ask. Was he a cannibal? Oh, my goodness. I think it's time for you to go. Oh, my goodness. Oh, brother. But, you know, those police officers got everything they deserved. They got, they got everything they deserved by, by, by uh, losing their jobs and, and uh, you know, being charged with murder. I guess it was third degree murder, not second degree. You know, probably it'll never be first degree. I got to give them some water, too. They're out of water. Let me give them some water. It'll never be, fir it'll never be first degree, um, but I think it should. Here, give me some, here, give me some water. There you go. There we go. Oh my goodness, they they started drinking it already. They didn't have any waters. So they're thirsty, but 
I, I agree that the cops got exactly what they deserved. I'm not saying that George Floyd didn't know. He deserved to be in prison, but he didn't deserve to die out of it. Uh, no, I hope they weren't either, but uh, uh, I think they, I think they, they said cannibal. They spelled cannibal right. So I don't think they meant that. I think they probably meant to say what they said. Was he a cannibal? But anyway, um, like I said, what the police officers did was totally wrong. Wrong all the way around. He didn't deserve to die. That's for sure. I don't agree with that. I wish that, that he hadn't have died. Just put him in handcuffs and put him, take him to the police station and be done with it. Don't, um, you know, do what do what they did. Put his foot, put his head and in, in stuff and bury him in the, uh, uh, you know. And it's terrible. I'm gonna wait. I gotta wait for this thing to go completely down and still until it, it um, naturally releases, until it goes down. But anyway, um, okay, all right, all right. So, thank you for coming in, those that have come in. If you have to leave, I understand. Oh, he did? Corona? Oh, really? That George Floyd? Oh, my goodness. Well, who knows if he'd have... He was 46. He might not have died from it. But, um, you know, I hate to see anything like this happen. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, him... Like I said, him passing away was very, very sad. Um, oh, in April. Him passing away is very, very sad. I, I, I wish that he hadn't have, but, you know, or they hadn't have killed him. But, you know, I don't really, let's put it this way. And I'm not standing up for the cops now. But I'm not sure they meant to kill him. I don't think that was their intention to kill him, but it happened. Because when he said he couldn't breathe... That should have been an indication to them right there. Why Why ask the trainers if they should let him up? The trainers trainers should know better, and they should just let him up anyway. No, they asked, the, they asked their trainees if they should let him up, and, of course, the trainees said no. Okay, thank you for coming in, and have a great day. You have a great, 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 great day. Yeah, it's, it'll be ready to come out in a little bit. i gotta, I got to wait till this thing goes all the way down. The pressure goes all the way down. It's still up there yet. When that goes down, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be out. But I, I, this whole thing has gotten out of hand. The rioting and the looting, it's just too much. I just wish that people would, would learn to get along with each other. You know, we need to get along with each other. We shouldn't be fighting with each other. It's just a little bit too much. You know, um... We, it, it's not right, you know. We gotta, we gotta learn to cohabitate. The problem of it is, um, and this is the way I look at it. We have to. We're gonna, we're gonna spend eternity together in heaven. If you can't, if you can't get along with somebody now on this earth, you're not gonna be able to live with them in heaven. We gotta be able to learn to cohabitate. And um, I guess this one black person, this one lady, she was. She's really dead set against what really happened. She's I'm not sticking up for George Floyd or the cops, but she doesn't she doesn't believe that all that Black Lives Matter for if not gonna you know for, um Yeah, uh Oh hi Captain Rehab. Um, you'll have to wait until you'll have to watch the her replay on this. Um I'm waiting for this to go all the way down so that I can I can um uh, um because people want to see what the cake the brownies look like. Um I know. I, I think if, if people could change their skin color from black to white, they would. But that being said, we are the KKK in the white race. And I am not in favor of them whatsoever. There's what you got. There's racism there. I love my black friends. I love my black friends. I love white friends. I've got all different kinds. And I love every one of them. And we need to learn to all get along um, and love each other. But you can see this whole situation with, um, no, but no, Damon, there's not. No, he was a Jew. He was fair-skinned. He was not black. Um, well, no, it's not true. No, it's not true, ja Damon. He was a Jew and he was fair-skinned. But that's not part of the scope anyway. But uh, thank you for asking. But I I just think that these, this, this stuff has gotten out of hand, uh, um, all these Vi the violence, you know what? You think about it. Violence leads to more violence. You, violence starts, and instead of it stopping, 
it keeps on it continues and snowballs. You're, the, I don't know. It makes no sense because they, they're they're real violent and and it, it, may, it. Why do they have to be violent? Violence violence is bad. Violence will lead to more violence. You know, it's not good. I don't understand it. That's right. Hate breeds hate. We need to learn to love. Oh, God bless you too, Cheryl, and have a great great night at work. And you can watch the replay later to see how I made this. And you'll see how it turned out later because I people wanted to stay in here to watch to see how it turned out. So if everybody leaves, then I'll just take it out. But it's almost, it should be ready to, to be uh, done in a little bit anyway. But, right, hate breeds hate. And if you love one another, that love breeds love. Hate breeds hate. I don't like it when, when we people start hating one another. And for what? Just because of the color, you're welcome. Just because of the color of their skin. They should put the color of their skin aside. And pretend like they got blinders on. And don't see the color of their skin. Love them anyway. You know, love them no matter what. Now, my daughter's niece, uh, she's dating a black man and she had a baby that's going to be is mixed. She does not care for the white race. She does not love the whites. And, and she's with the, she loves the protests. She, she'd like to go out there and protest with them and say all black lives, black lives matter. I, I don't understand her thinking because her mom's trying to tell her all lives matter, but she doesn't agree. But uh, huh, it, it's crazy. She does. She doesn't even like her own race. She doesn't like whites. She won't date them, and everything. She only date blacks. You know. Well, that's okay. That for her, if that's what she wants to do. But that's almost like her being a racist to her own race. It's crazy. You know. Why do that to yourself? Love everybody, no matter who they are. She could learn to love white people and and date white men. They're not that bad. But I guess she hasn't found any that she really wants to date that that she can trust is what it is. So. She just dates black men because she thinks she can trust them. Not all of them can you trust anyway. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming in, those that are here. I'm, I'm waiting for this to go down so I can show you what it looks like when it, because um, it's got it's got to release naturally. And it should be, shouldn't take too long because there's not that much water in there. So once that releases, then I'll let the, let the, take the lid off. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how this looks because uh, you had I had to put foil on it. Of course, Alexa, she didn't think I needed foil, and she said, no foil. Well, I said, it takes foil. Um, anyway, I made this because this is Arlene's birthday today. She's not here right now. She was here earlier. She had to go. Uh, but this is for, this is, uh, I should have put birthday on the on my on my title, and I, I didn't think about it. I'll probably go back and change it and edit it. But anyway, it's for her, um, even though she's not going to eat it. Um, I'm making it because it's her birthday. So uh, she's got her own cake, and she's been eating her cake. She's 62 today. So um, what's your weather like there, Damon? Because uh, I've been talking about the weather and everything here. We're going to be 67 today, a little rainy. Not real good. So, But, I, you know, I'm thankful for the rain. We need rain. We need rain to make things grow. So I'm happy about that. So I'm thankful for that. But, you know, I'm hoping we don't get real, real hot. We're not right now. Um, and I'm loving it because it's staying, it's staying just, just ideal. It's uh, not too hot. It's, um, and it's ah, not real cool either. I think I'm going to unplug this because it'll still go down on its own without that. And, and, and it's, oh, well, not right now. We don't have any rain right now, but it's supposed to, it will start raining eventually. It'll start raining eventually. Um, uh, we're supposed to get showers today. Um. They said, that's what they said anyway. Um, showers. I'm going to try and see how far this is. Maybe there isn't much left in here. I can let it out anyway. Well, it would have, it would have stopped anyway, because there it's just about out. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to let that out, because it would have, it would have done, a, there it goes. It would have only taken a few minutes and have been down anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this off. Okay, it's got foil on it. I knew it should have been long enough. Let me take these things here. It smells good. I smell it. Okay. Oh, these things are hard to grab with this. Yeah. 
Come on, get up there. <laughs> Come on. Well, you know what I'm going to do? Try to get a fork or something or pull it up with something. And then, um, ah, can't pull it up with that. I'm going to see if I can get a fork or something, lift it up, fork or knife or something, and then I'll, I'll be right there. I'm just going to pull them out like this, and then I can, here we go. Now, now I can grab them. Okay. Okay. I'll check. Now, we'll see how this looks. Wow. Can you see it? Let me see if I can get this out of here. Look at that. Look at that. There, look, it looks real good, doesn't it? It looks real good. This is an, I found this on, on Pinterest. So, it's real simple to make in the, in the, in the quick cooker. And this is a spring form pan, by the way. I have to leave it set in here for a few minutes. And you just and you just release it on the sides and get the bottom out. Um, oh gee, looks like I, I I poked it on the one side and I ruined it. Oh no, or did a shrink? Uh, I'll fix that. But it looks pretty good. I'm gonna fix it before I post post it up. Yeah, my my thing got in it before I post it up. Po uh, very very little. We don't get thunderstorms here. Um, we just don't. I'm gonna put that down. There we go. Um, we just don't get them here. Um, we get, we don't get lightning either. So, um, we just, we, I don't know. We just, we just don't, not in this area anyway. Um, so all I'm going to do is release the, dump this water out and then I can put this back because this is not dirty. All I had was water in it. So I don't need to, I'll just sit it back in here for now. So yeah, I, um, there are a lot of places now where I come from Indiana, they had thunderstorms continuously. We got a lot of thunderstorms, but here in here in Oregon, this part of Oregon, we don't get them. We just don't get the thunderstorms. Um, I live in the southwest part of Oregon, and it's just not common here. Um, we do get rain though. We can get we can get a lot of rain, so huh, that it, it definitely will get a lot of rain. But this could have probably risen a little higher. But the brownie, you don't want it to rise real high anyway. <coughs> That's a real deep pan. So um, I can show you. This is what it looks like. You can see it. Um, oh. So hold it up like that. There, you can see it now. Whoa. Huh. So there. So I'm going <coughs> to, I think, <coughs> I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go. Because these dogs are wanting to go for a walk. If I can, if, oh, I've got my dishes to do, so. I'm going to go ahead and do my dishes. So go ahead and feel free to watch the replay so you can see how I made this. And I hope you all have a great and marvelous day. And until we meet again, take care, God bless, and bye-bye. Bye-bye.